Hey guys, it's Lindsay. We are here in beautiful Joshua Tree National Park and we are going to do a yoga class today. Kind of a nice gentle flow, not too many planks, down dogs. We're gonna stretch it all out. So we're gonna start kneeling. Interlace your hands in front of you. Scoop your tailbone down, draw your belly in. Exhale, press your hands forward. Round out your spine, separate those shoulder blades, creating some space in the upper back. And as you inhale, lengthen your spine, bring your arms up overhead, keeping that tailbone angle down. Lift your heart up through your arms, press through the palms and pull the shoulders into the back. Exhale round, palms press forward, core pulls back. Inhale, arch, arms stretch up, ribs come together. I want you to think of your cat cows here. Exhale, rounding out that spine. And inhale, reversing the C curve. And straighten up the spine, open the arms to a T. Let's step the right foot out to the right. We're gonna line the foot up with the left knee. Take your right palm onto the leg, press your pelvis forward, flip your left palm up, stretch up and over into a side bend. Create as much space between your left knee and your left fingertips. And then reversing this left hand to the mat. Fingertips are palm, right arm stretches up and overhead. Good, using your core, roll up, right hand, right thigh, left arm stretches overhead. Good, rolling down, back to the mat. Left hand or fingertips underneath the shoulder, this time float the right foot up. You're gonna grab the outside of the right foot, push your hips forward, open your chest, and then start to kick that right foot back into the hand. This is going to create a chest shoulder stretch as well as a quad stretch, just depending on where you're feeling stiffness today in your body. And release, plant, roll it up. Let's come back to kneeling. Knees, hips, distance. Interlace your hands in front of you. You're going to exhale, pull the core back, press the palms forward. And then this time, circle the arms behind the back. Interlace the hands. Clasp the fingers, reach them down to the floor, lift the chest up to the ceiling. Good, exhale. Fingers interlace in front of you, round out your back. Good, circle the arms back behind you, interlace those fingers. Palms face each other, chest up, tailbone down. Good, one more time through, exhale. Interlace in front of you, push through your palms, pull your waist back. And then sweep the arms behind you, clasp the hands, angle the fists and the tailbone down, open the collarbone up towards the ceiling. And then come to a neutral spine, stretch the arms out to a T. We'll lengthen that left foot over to the left this time, line the foot up with the right knee. Left palm to the left thigh, stretch that right arm up and over. So I'm making one long line from my right fingertips to my right kneecap. Circle it up. Right hand to the mat, fingertips or palm, and stretch that left arm all the way overhead. Push your hips forward. Good. Use your core, roll up. Left hand, left thigh. Big side body stretch down that right side. Good. Roll it back to the mat. Plant your right hand, float the left leg up. Grab the outside of the left leg with the left hand. Push your pelvis forward and start to kick your foot back. Now keep that engagement of the low belly so that we're supporting the low back and not overarching from the low back. If anything, I want you to think of the back bend coming from your upper back, more of your chest expanding. Good. Reach the body long and release back to kneeling. Interlace your fingers, shoulders drop, arms stretch all the way up and overhead. Corset your belly, pulling your abdominal muscles in, and let's take a big side bend over to the right. Reach through the arms, pull in through those shoulders. And exhale, center side bend, up and over to the left. And center, let's go one more each way. As you go into that side bend, imagine your head, the back of your head, and your, the, the pinky side of your finger is touching a wall behind you. So try not to turn down towards the floor, but stay open towards the wall that you're looking at, or the TV or camera that you're looking at. Center, take it over to the left. Shoulders and hips point forward. 
and center. Nice work. Release the hands. We're going to take a seat back on the heels. Toes untucked. Getting the rocks out of the way so it's comfortable and any sticky um, plants. Ooh, I feel, oh man, look at that. It's a good one. Okay, so toes untucked. We're going to grab the top of the right leg, right knee, left hand to the mat. Pull that right knee up. Support your right hand on the mat, or you can have both hands on the knee. So this is going to give you a nice stretch through the top of the foot and the shin. But depending on how flexible you are, we'll kind of decide how high the knee lifts. You know, if it's really intense, you might be more here. That's fine. Let's switch it up. So left hand to the left side of the leg, right hand to the left knee. We're going to pull it up. And if you feel balanced enough, both hands to the leg, lift the spine up. Or take a modification that I just let you know about on the other side. Ooh, that feels good from so much tennis shoe wearing. Okay, release. You're going to plant your hands, plant your feet, and then fold down, forward fold. Feet about hips distance this is our first forward fold of the day. So I just want you to shake it out. Keep a soft bend in those knees. Start to release through those hamstrings and the low back. We're going to bend the knees, roll it up, flip the hair if your hair is not tied up, and stretch your arms overhead. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to the heart. So let's take it into Malasana. Toes and knees are turning out. With your spine staying tall, so I'm thinking chest over hips, I'm going to take a deep squat. Open the knees up, hands to the heart. Push the knees open. Scoop the tailbone down. And you know, if you're tighter or have not so great of posture, you might be here. You could always put books or yoga blocks underneath you to help support your spine and stay a little bit more lifted. This can be a deep opener for those inner thighs, the groin area. So stay here, you can take the variation with me. Drop the right shoulder down, reach your right arm out to the right and push your arm open into the knee. Stretch your left arm up to the left corner of the room, twist through the spine, and then I want you to lengthen again. So I know we're leaning over, but I want you to think long back. Good, exhale, release. Hands to the heart, restack that spine, scoop the pelvis, drop the left shoulder down inside the left knee, reach that left hand over to the side, another sticky plant, reach that right arm up, we're twisting. Both knees are still pressing back, that's how we're getting the opener in the hip. So make sure your knees aren't starting to cave in, you're not sinking to the inside of the foot. We want to keep the inside of the feet lifted. Good, release hands to the heart. Hands to the mat, turn your toes forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. You can heel toe those feet a little closer together if you're feeling more flexible. Good, bend the knees, roll it up, Urdhva Hastasana, stretch those arms up overhead and hands to the heart. So let's take the feet about your mat's distance apart. So let's say a foot distance apart. Interlace your hands behind your back. You're going to clasp your fingers, roll your shoulders off your chest, open that chest up, take a deep bend in the left knee. We're going to turn the upper body to the right. Forward fold. Chest is facing the right wall. Arms are hanging back and we're leaning our back towards that left knee, pulling our right hip crease back in space. Letting the top of the head drop towards the ground. And taking a big breath in and out here. And then engage your core. Roll all the way up to standing. We're going to switch sides. So we'll bend the right knee a lot this time. Turn the chest left. Forward fold. Leaning your back against the inside of that right thigh. Opening your chest up. Facing the left wall. Sealing my whole left foot to the mat while I draw my left hip crease back, creating a big stretch through that leg. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Good. Bend the knees, roll it up to standing and release the hands. Walk the feet about hips distance apart. We're going IT van now. So your right foot will stay planted pointing forward. The left leg is going to cross in front of it. Left knee is bent, right leg will be straight. We're coming down to the mat in a forward fold. 
You can always put blocks or maybe even a chair underneath your hands if you're more inflexible and this is really stiff. Good, now I'm gonna walk my hands over to the left as I draw my right hip back. So I'm making this side of my body long. So be careful not to pull the hips forward. I'm pulling them back in space, creating even more of a stretch along the left, oh, sorry, along the right side of the body. Good, and you can twist your core to the left wall as well to make that a little bit deeper. Good, come back to center. Uncross the legs and we'll roll it up for side two. So left foot's planted, that leg will stay straight, the right leg will cross in front, right knee will bend, and the left leg will always stay strong and straight. Start to fold down, forward fold. I think we got a B. Okay, that's what happens when you film outdoors. We're just gonna go back into it, forward fold. <laughs> And then if you're wanting to take that variation, you can walk the hands over to the right. Then left leg staying strong and straight, pulling that left hip back in space. Doing a little side bend with the upper body. I know we're folding forward, but we're also in somewhat of a side bend position too. Oh, it's just a fly. Not a bee, we're good. Okay, come back to center, uncross your legs, and roll it up. Okay, so we're gonna do a little Ashtanga style, feet together, fingertips together. If appropriate, you're gonna jump your arms and legs open, soft knees, Land nice jump. and softly for our wide-legged fold. So fingertips and toes will point forward as we fold down. Bring the hands to the mat, bend the elbows, and let the top of your head drop towards the floor and just start to shift weight forward towards your toes. Bring some weight into the hands to start to intensify the stretch. And firm your thighs and press them towards the wall behind you and lift up through the back of your legs thinking they're gonna touch the sky, the ceiling above you. Walk your hands over to the right. We'll grab the right ankle and then you're gonna draw your left hip back in space. So I want you to try to keep your hip, hip squared and then twist through your spine, turning your chest, your ribs, and your belly to the right wall. And gently release the leg. Let's walk it over to the left. Both hands to the left leg. Draw that right hip crease back in space. And then use the arms as leverage to help you twist through your core. Still shifting weight to the toes, releasing any tension throughout the neck. And then releasing, shifting back through center. Soft knees roll all the way up to standing. Okay, we're gonna turn our toes and knees out for ninja pose. If you need yoga blocks or books, you can always, or pillows, you can always put them underneath your hips. So angle your right foot out slightly, same with the left. Bend the right knee deeply, you can bring the hands to the mat and turn the left knee and toes to the sky. So we're rolling that left inner thigh up, push your right knee back, draw your hands to your heart, and you can use your right elbow to push the right knee open. This is now kind of like a power pose, right? It's not easy, it's not as stretchy. So you're getting a little bit into the strength of the legs, especially the core and the spine. It's pretty hard to stay upright here. So hands to the mat could be a modification, but we're about to take a seat. So roll back, take a seat onto those hips and just adjust so you feel weight on both hips. Roll your left knee up to the sky still. We're gonna grab our left hand on that right ankle. Drop your left shoulder down inside of the left leg and then you'll stretch your left foot and your right hand to each other. Take a big twist through your body. Lay back on the leg and you'll push that right knee open in space. Since we're feeling this all along the right side body. And then as you exhale, release the arms. We're gonna come into a wide-legged fold, so just hands to the mat, toes point forward, and fold it down. Maybe the head's resting on the floor now. 
Maybe it's resting on a couple blocks. Whatever works for you. Good, and then exhale, soften the knees, roll it up. Okay, let's turn the toes and knees out. Getting some grass in my hair, but that's okay. We're out in the desert. So you'll turn your toes and knees out. We're gonna take a deep bend in the left knee. Open the right knee and toes up to the sky. Push your left knee open, bring your hands to the heart. I can already tell on this side, it's much easier for me to balance. It's not quite as challenging to stay lifted. Spreading the collarbone apart. And then eventually we're taking that seat. So your right hand will grab the left ankle. We'll try to keep that left knee wide the whole time. Dropping my right shoulder inside my right inner thigh and then stretching my left arm overhead. Pulling my spine long, chin coming off the chest. And then resting my head down on to that right leg. Spinning my body open to the skies. Good, and then releasing, coming into that wide fold, hands to the mat, toes forward. Lean weight to the toes, the hands, the top of the head. Good, and then bend the knees and roll it up. Okay, we're gonna jump it back in. So hands are wide, toes are pointing forward, soften in the knees, bring everything back together. Land nice and soft. Okay, so we're moving into some balancing pose. poses. Use a wall, use a chair, a couch, modify as you see fit. Remember, it's yoga practice, not perfection. It's okay to fall, it's okay to not look like me. If I fall, I'm not gonna edit it. I'm just gonna leave it in because, you know, we're all human, right? So, we're gonna begin with standing pigeon. So we'll keep the left foot on the floor. The right ankle will cross over the left foot, making a window. Opening up to about a 90 degree bend, hinging from your hips. I'm reaching my hips back and then lengthening my chest forward. You can practice more of the balance by staying here. You can bring your hands to a chair. If you're more flexible, it almost makes it a little easier as far as the balance, right? Because you can bring your hands down to the ground. So you have three points of contact instead of one. And then I want to maintain that length in the spine. So I want you to stay high enough where your back doesn't look like that but it more so flattens out. Woo. See, it's okay. I fell, but we're sticking with it. Chest is reaching forward, hips are reaching back, dropping low. Good, this is a nice hip opener on that right leg. And then I'm gonna exhale, come to standing, release that foot to the floor. Same leg will be stretching, not a Rajasana dancer's pose. So I'm gonna go all the way to the side for this one. So the left foot is on the floor, toes point forward. Grab the outside of the foot with the right hand. Draw the knees together and let's reach that left hand straight forward. Pointer finger and thumb touch. Now, instead of thinking of leaning forward into this, I actually want you to stay really tall. So before you even begin this, pull up through the body and grow a couple inches taller. Then start to kick your foot straight back and be careful of sending the knee open or sticking your butt back. So scoop the pelvis and then start to kick up. If anything, I would rather you square than get really high. So we're drawing the right side of the body forward, pulling the left side of the body back. Good. Thinking tripod foot, big toe, pinky toe, heel. Setting the shoulders down the back and lifting up nice and tall. And we have our drishti, our vocal point, where we're gazing at. And then really the full pose is to slowly come out and release nicely. So instead of something like this. <laughs> okay. One more balancing pose on this side. Left foot is staying on the floor. We're gonna make peace fingers with our right hand for Utita Hasta Parangustasana, which is hand to foot pose, extended hand to foot pose. So hook from the inside of your right big toe with your right peace fingers. Stand up really tall in the spine and then stretch your right arm straight forward. Pull the right shoulder back and draw your inner thighs together. So I don't really want your pose to look like this. Whoa, I got a lot of flies going on. I, would, I want your foot to be in line with your hip and your hips to be squared and not hiking up. 
If you'd like to continue the balance, you'll take the left hand to the outside of the right foot, grow an inch taller, and then start to turn. We're reaching the right arm to the back wall, and I'm gonna gaze back towards my right hand. Smoothly breathing through my nose, and then very slowly turning the gaze back towards the foot, grabbing the back of the leg, bending the knee, and releasing. Nice job, guys. We've got that whole series on the other side. So be patient with yourself. Let's start right foot on the floor. We're going standing pigeon. Left ankle will cross over the right thigh, and I'm gonna reach my hips straight back. If your legs flexible, you might be higher up right here. If you're more flexible, start to really bend the standing knee. Go ahead, lengthen your chest, fingertips to the ground. And then I want you to pull your chest forward. Spread open your chest. Okay, let's take a couple breaths here. If you're really flexible, you still wanna challenge the balance, you can keep your hands off the ground, just have them low. Good, and then as you're ready, release gracefully, and take it up to standing. Okay, Natarajasana dancer's pose. So right foot will stay on the floor this time. Spine is tall, left hand grabs the outside of the left foot. So remember, the two things we're really being careful about is sticking the knee open and sticking our butt back. So I don't wanna see a lot of curve here. I want the tailbone to drop down, the low belly to lift up, and the knees to hug in as if there's a yoga block between them. Reach the right arm forward, Stay tall in the chest as you start to kick your left foot back. And in every couple inches of height I'm gaining behind me, I'm readjusting. I'm anchoring my right shoulder back, drawing my left side forward. Good, and then I wanna think of the top of my head and my left foot going straight up so that I don't start to hinge forward. Good, point your left knee down, reach, reach, reach. Good, and then we're gonna gracefully exit the pose and take it down to the mat. Nice work. Okay, Utita Hasta Padangustasana is our next balance pose. So we're gonna do peace fingers of the left hand, grabs the inside of the left foot, lengthen the legs straight forward. Now what I was talking about on the other side is I do not want your outside hip hiking up like this. So think of when you're working out and crunching your obliques. You do not want to do that. So lengthen your left hip down and draw your inner thighs together. Stand tall in your standing leg. Grow an inch taller there. We'll add on to the balance. Right hand's going to grab the outside of that left foot. Sinking the left hip crease down. Woo. Got some flies attacking me. Let's try that again. So we're gonna grab the outside of the left foot with the right hand, reach it forward, left hand reaches back, and I'm twisting into it. So when you turn your head to the back hand, it's a really slow turn, and that will help you keep your balance, right? Think of a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, then you're gonna slowly rotate your head back to the front and grab the back of the left leg and release. Nice work, you made it through the balance challenge. Okay guys, so we're gonna go for a little bit of an Achilles stretch. Glue the feet together, bend your knees, keeping them together. Eventually your heels will pop up and you'll be trying to push your heels down into the floor. So we're lengthening this area that's right below the calves. Yeah, we're trying to stretch that out. You can have your hands on the heart. You can have your fingertips on the ground for a little bit more balance. Right, and then plant the hands, legs together, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, palms to shins, push off the shins, gaze forward, nice flat back. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands to the right side of the mat. Step your left foot forward and wide and your right foot back in a high lunge. Good, I want you to firm your right thigh so it stays lifted off of the ground. Left knee should stack over the left ankle as the left hip crease draws back. So make sure we're not here. 
we want to keep this side more of the joint stacked knee over ankle more flexible you're going to come down to your forearms more flexible you could begin to drop your head down into the stretch but we are doing a high lunge so keep your knee up off of the mat for me and then as you're ready let's press back up on to the hands to go into a twist so right hand underneath the shoulder as you breathe in reach your left arm up to the ceiling stack the arms one on top of each other and then exhale bend your left elbow tap it to the mat inside of the left foot two more times inhale reach up and twist exhale bend that left elbow and tap down on the mat inhale open up Exhale, tap it down. And then let's plant your hands and you'll drop your right knee again to the floor. We'll go for the quad stretch. This one always gets me. So we're gonna take a twist again to your left. Reach back with your left hand, capture your right foot. Can't get it? You could use a belt around your foot and hold the strap. But more flexible, you could come down on to your right forearm. More flexible, you just start to kind of lay down into it and breathe good release press up onto your hands and tuck your back toes and step them to the front of the mat forward fold for me inhale ardha uttanasana palms to shins flat back like a table exhale fold okay second side we're gonna step the right foot forward and wide Tuck the left toes long behind us in line with our hips. And then if you're staying in your high lunge on your hand, just plant those hands right underneath your shoulders and from the front of your left thigh up to the ceiling. If you wanna go a little deeper, we're coming down onto our forearms, pulling our hips back and reaching our chest forward. Nice straight spine here. Strong through the legs. Deep psoas opener, hamstrings, all the good stuff. Good, then press back up onto your hands. Let's take that twist series. So as you inhale, you're gonna turn to the left. Turn to the... So as you inhale, you're going to turn to the right. Reach that right arm up, open the chest, and then tap that right elbow down inside the right foot. We'll do two more of those. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, tap it down. Good. Last one. Inhale. Open the body up. Exhale. Tap it down. Good. And then plant the hands. I'm going to lower the back knee to the mat. And then again, we're going to twist for that quad stretch. So I'll keep my left hand over underneath the shoulder. Turn to the right. Reach back for the left foot with the right hand and gently pull it in towards you. But if you would like to take that deeper option, come to the left forearm, drop the chest down to the mat, and pull the heel close to your body, opening up the front of that left thigh. This for me gets very tight. I like to work legs, so I guess that might be it. Good, release, plant the hands. Let's step back into one last forward fold. Bring the left foot to the front of the mat, feet together, toes together, heels slightly apart. And let's take a deepest fold of class. So shift weight to the toes, and let the top of the head drop down. And then grab the back of the legs with the hands, push your legs into your hands, and pull your hands into your leg. Close the space between your nose and your shins. Breathing here. Good, then gently releasing. And step yourself down to kneeling. Tuck your toes hips distance apart. Take a seat on your heels or stretching out the arches of those feet.
This can be pretty intense for some. So if you're like, what? Um, you could be more here. You could also put a pillow between your calves and your shins. Or those are kind of the same thing, your calves and your thighs. Good, and then let's take two deep breaths here. Just gazing down the tip of your nose towards the mat. And starting to slow things down, but keeping your mind on the mat. Good, and then shift four. Let's take puppy pose as our big back bend today. This is a favorite of mine. So hands wide, fingers wide, and I like to slightly turn my hands out because my shoulders are pretty tight compared to the rest of my body. Draw your shoulders in. Instead of thinking of a child's pose where you drop your butt down towards your heels, you're gonna lift your hips very high up to the sky as you drop your chest to the mat. And then we're practicing something called external rotation in the arms. So you do not want your elbows to be turning out and bending wide to the side. It's almost as if you're trying to spiral your tricep or your elbow to point down to the mat. Then the hands are actively pushing down and we're pulling our chest to the front of the mat, drawing our core in and reaching our tailbone up and behind us. Either your chin can rest on the mat and you can gaze forward, or your head can be on the mat or a block and gaze down. The chin is a little bit more intense. You can begin to walk those knees back and that will create a bigger stretch as well for the body. Holding for three more breaths. And if it's uncomfortable, really working to keep that breath soft and smooth. Last breath in, last breath out. Then walk the knees together towards the hands and let's bring it down to a seat. Amazing. Okay, let's go into double pigeon. Okay, so right knee in line with ankle. Bring that left leg and stack it on top. Now your modification would be to have the left foot in front like this. So stacking the legs can be intense on the knees and that is a no-no. If you feel pressure in the knee, I want you to do the modification. If it's uncomfortable, that's okay. So know the difference between um, a little discomfort and pain. Pain is no, come out of it. So start to lean forward into it, keeping your chest open. Option, put that yoga block underneath your head or if you're like me and you're out in the desert, you don't have a block, that's also okay. But I'm trying to shift my body weight over to my left. Whoa. Big breaths in and out through the body. If you're more flexible, maybe those hands come in front of you, start to lean down onto them. Good, and then press your way up, and let's just switch the legs out. Good, if you need to shake it out, shake it out. And then we're gonna bring the left leg to the bottom. If you're modifying, right leg is in front, or we're stacking. Good, flex your feet. Opposite foot and knee should line up with each other. And this time I wanna shift weight now to the right. So make sure it doesn't look like you're falling over to the left side of your mat. Spine is long, heart is open, and if you like, you're gonna fold forward. And, and you know, one side of the body could be stiffer than the other. And as much as we're trying to create balance, it is definitely okay if you need to back off on one side or you go further on the other, that, that's okay. So if you're like, whoa, this is too much, even though I did it on the last side, just, you know, back off on your body wherever it's at. Go ahead, pull your heart forward, stop to start to drop down a little bit deeper into it. And then give me three deep breaths here. And as you exhale, just release that tension 
that you're feeling in the muscles. Good, and then exhale your way all the way up. Let's take Upavishta Konasana, coming into a wide-legged straddle pose. And you're gonna flex your feet, roll your inner thighs up. If you notice that your low back is really rounded here, I want you to put some pillows underneath your hips and get your spine nice and tall. And maybe that will be enough of a stretch. If you're more flexible, start to take the legs wider. Just use your hands to widen the space. With a long spine, you'll start to lean forward, but I want you to pay attention of your legs rolling in. So if that starts to happen, you need to back off or just reset those legs or folding down the middle. I want your heart to be going forward instead of just down and making your way down to a comfortable stretch. Let's find those three deep breaths here on this side. and then making your way up to a seat. Okay, let's come into a twist to finish. You're gonna bend your right knee and your left knee, but your left heel is gonna be close to your body this time. And then your right foot is going to stack on top of your left thigh and the top of the foot's gonna turn up. If that's not an option, just crisscross applesauce. So left hand to the right knee, right hand's gonna reach all the way behind the back and grab on to that right foot. And then we're gonna use the arms to pull us into a twist. And in your twist, I want you to think of lifting up through your chest, not just about turning. So be careful of being in a really rounded position, dumping the spine and twisting. I want to keep that core lifted and tall. So twisting poses in yoga are used for detoxification and you know you could think of that as maybe an emotional detoxification or maybe an actual detoxification of uh, you know maybe too much vino too much holiday food um, but whatever that is for you so connect with that right now what do you need to detoxify from in your life today you don't have to tell anyone that it's just something personal let it go move on from it and then release the twist. So let's take that on the other side. So you're just gonna place your right foot on the floor, heel close to you, and then the top of the left foot coming all the way up into that right hip crease, if that feels okay. And then right hand to the left knee, left hand reaches behind the back, you're gonna grab the foot, lift the heart, and we're twisting. So cleansing the body of whatever we're releasing whatever we're letting go of today. What can you let go of that will help you better balance yourself, your life? Reflect on that for a moment. and then gently release, unwind. And let's come to Sukhasana. So you're just gonna cross your legs at your ankles. And then let's open that chest up. Rest the back of your hands on your knees. Close your eyes. Soften your shoulders. And just taking a minute here to be grateful for your practice. And taking time to connect with your body. So oftentimes in life, we're just so busy that we don't take that moment to check in with ourselves. And let's take a big inhale together. So let's reach our arms up, gaze up, open those eyes, connect your palms into each other, 
Then draw your hands down to your heart. Press your thumb into your chest. Bow your chin. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Oh man, I just love Joshua Tree so much. I'm glad I got to film a yoga class here for you guys today. Just seems like the right thing to do here, yoga. I would do it even if I wasn't filming it for everyone. This is one of my favorite places to escape. It just feels like a very spiritual place to me. So thank you guys for practicing with me today. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments if you liked the scenery. And my name is Lindsay Bushman. This is Pilates On Demand. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Please like, subscribe, and share. Bye.